There is nothing new under the sun, and that includes America facing a deadly viral pandemic. In the early to midpoint of the 20th century, it was poliomyelitis, more commonly known as polio, a highly infectious illness that spreads through contact between people by nasal and oral secretions. Many polio survivors were disabled for life. In the late 1940s, polio outbreaks in the United States increased in frequency and in size, crippling an average of more than 35,000 people each year. Parents were frightened to let their children go outside, especially in the summer when the virus seemed to peak. Public health officials imposed quarantines not only on homes but on entire towns where polio cases were diagnosed. The United States experienced multiple polio epidemics, but its worst was in the early 1950s. In 1952, an outbreak reached immense proportions. Of 58,000 cases reported that year, 21,000 were left with mild to disabling paralysis and more than 3,000 died. In 1947, Dr. Jonas Salk was recruited by the University of Pittsburgh to develop a virus research program. He used the method of growing the virus. Salk was a leading proponent of the approach to use inactivated or killed viruses. By 1954, the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis adopted Salk's vaccine for large-scale trials. Throughout the mid-1950s, however, the cost of the necessary three shots per person and fear kept many reluctant to try the vaccine. Then in 1955, an insufficiently killed virus in the vaccine at a lab in Berkeley, California, infected hundreds of children. At least 11 died and possibly 200 were paralyzed. Salk did not use a patent, instead donating his vaccine. It eventually worked in bulk, especially for juveniles who were being vaccinated by the millions. Now teens became the group hit hardest. And for those teens, not just a doctor was important, but a king. As in the 21-year-old king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, who had bursted onto the national scene earlier that year. Teens Against Polio was formed, and the group held sock hop dances, renamed Saw Cops. And they encouraged teen girls not to go on dates with boys who had not been vaccinated. Chicago-born Dr. Leona Baumgartner was the first female to run the New York City Health Department, the largest in the country. She and the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis had an idea how to really appeal to teens. That's where Elvis comes in. On October 28, 1956, he was in New York City preparing for his second appearance on the Ed Sullivan television show. That afternoon at the CBS studios, Elvis was vaccinated, live on national television, carried by all three networks. Unfortunately, only photos exist, no video. To say that this was an effective performance is an understatement. Immunization levels for teens went from a little more than one half percent of the country to 80% in the next six months. And polio incidents were down 90% by the end of the decade. No wonder that the Nexus Information Technology Organization wrote that no other individual has had an impact on U.S. healthcare as Elvis did, as well as having the greatest impact on the lives of American children in the second half of the 20th century. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe.